Want to hear how my Launchpad grad, Reem, a non-native English speaker from Egypt, went from working a 9 to 5 job to being the CEO of her very own copywriting agency in just 6 months? <laughs> Keep watching. Hey Posse, what's up? It's Alex coming at you this week with an exclusive sneak peek at a bonus interview that I conducted with one of my awesome Copy Posse Launchpad grads, Reem. Now, I really wanted to share Reem's story with you too because her transformation is incredibly inspiring. Reem enrolled in my eight week copywriter coaching program, the Copy Posse Launchpad, just one year ago. And during the program, she landed not one, not two, but four retainer clients. And just six months after graduating, she said goodbye to her unfulfilling nine to five job and started copywriting full time. So that happened in October of 2022. This interview happened in November, 2022. So just one month after quitting her job, she had already built up a $4,000 a month copywriting business and her business continues to grow today. In her own words, she went from being paid peanuts from clients who were undervaluing her work to being the CEO of her own copywriting agency with a team of freelance writers that work under her. But like any great story, she didn't get there magically. No, Reem began her journey with a lot of fear and doubt around whether she could really turn her passion for writing into a career. So in this interview, you're gonna hear exactly how she was able to overcome those mental blocks and barriers that were holding her back and how she got to where she is today. But before we get to the interview, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe below if you wanna see more exclusive interviews like this one and ring that bell to be notified when my next video goes live and be sure to stick around to the end of this interview for more information about the program that helped Reem make her dreams a reality. Now here's the interview. I'm so excited you're here. Your story, first of all, <laughs> you were in the Own the Inbox challenge one year ago. Yes, and I exactly remember, one year ago. Yeah, yeah, I remember you asking a lot of questions and I remember you expressing a lot of doubt about whether or not this was something you could do. Yeah. And now here you are as one of the panelists on this in on this interview sharing your story. So how do you feel when you think about that? That one year ago you were in the shoes of so many of our challengers right now, feeling some doubt about about getting started. Honestly, I think I feel like it's all not happening to me. Like I'm living like in some other body or something. Like it's it it just doesn't feel real until right now. Like yeah. even watching myself be on this panel and like being with everyone else and remembering last year how I was so astonished and so inspired by everyone and just doubting myself and thinking, I don't think I'm going to be one of those, you know, maybe I'm going to be a success, but not to the extent of like being on a panel and sharing my story and like making a buzz or anything like that. So it still feels very surreal, I'd say. Yeah, which I absolutely love. I absolutely love that. So for everyone, everyone who doesn't know you share where where you're from uh, I'm from Egypt and um, I'm working from Egypt like I don't travel abroad or anything because I still live with my family that's the tradition here in Egypt we like we don't move out of our houses until we get married and that sort of thing um, so this is where I reside like I, I don't travel except for vacations and things like that yeah and that was a, a big I know a big doubt that you had getting started in copywriting was yeah. that you weren't a native English speaker and you were worried that that would hold you back yeah. in some way. Um, so I want to talk exactly. more about that in, in just a sec, but to rewind, because I, I tend to do this, I get ahead of myself because I get excited, but mm. let's rewind. Where were you a year ago like obviously we knew we know you were in a challenge with the posse a year ago but where were you at sort of in your life at that point in time and what made you decide to join the copy posse and start learning copywriting okay so um i had been working for full, for four years full time uh jumping from job to job all corporate um at the time of the challenge i was just promoted to head of content at an seo content agency mm -hmm. um and on paper everything was great like i was basically 
climbing up the corporate ladder, doing the thing that everyone in my country is supposed to do. Um, but for me, something always felt wrong. I was always so unhappy um, with the nine to five lifestyle, having to ask permission to take time off, um, having to commute every single day and like have to work from the office because in Egypt, it's not so common to be working from home or working remotely, um, doing things that not always uh, would they fulfill me and I just felt like I would always want to do more and so I started freelancing um, on the side uh, I wasn't entirely new to it when I joined on the inbox but I was basically doing it just to try to find something that fulfills me and at the same time make ends meet because you know salaries and like Egypt uh, the salaries aren't exactly very high um, and so I was working with a couple of clients mostly local ones here in Egypt um, and just like a couple of international ones on Upwork but they were all very cheap um, to say that I was making like average would be like an overstatement I was making less than the average um, and so uh, I wanted to delve more into copywriting because I was so passionate about, about it when I came across it with some clients and that's when I came across like a course here in Egypt and um, it was a, a really well-known course, but then I took it and I felt like there was still more to explore. This isn't exactly in line with my expectations. Um, and so I think because I was searching for so many copywriting courses, that's when you started to pop up um, in my feed and like on my browser, like everywhere, I would just see your name. Um, and then I found uh, the Own the Inbox challenge and I felt like, okay, this is a start. Um, and although it was the first time that I would invest like in an international course with an international like um, course instructor, I felt like this was the right thing to do. And then the rest is history <laughs> from one course to another with you until now, like where I am. Um, that's how it started. Yeah, I love that. Well, first of all, thank you, Algorithm, for leading you to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so what were what were your doubts getting started? I mean, like you said, you had been content writing and freelancing already, but wanted to get more into copywriting. Uh, you were you were making some money, but not a lot, as you mm. said. And yeah, what were what were some of the doubts that, and fears really that were coming up for you at that point? OK, so at that point, I was just as I said, I was just like basically treating freelancing as a side hustle, side hustle. I didn't even get this idea of full-time freelancing until on the inbox. And then when I started seeing that people are doing this like for a living, um, I started going deeper into this whole and searching. And like, I started joining a lot of Facebook groups, following a lot of people who are doing this for a living on Facebook and on LinkedIn and stuff. And I was like, I want that for myself too. Um, but then most of these people, they would be Americans or Europeans and, you know, they, they weren't Egyptian, basically. No one's doing this in Egypt. Um, and the first thing that came to my mind is like, why would anyone choose me? I'm not a native speaker. I don't live in Europe. I don't live in the US. I don't live in any of these places. And the numbers that they were charging, they, they would easily make up my salary like here in Egypt. And so I was like, oh my God, how would I ever charge this for, you know, a blog post or for a sales page or whatever? I was like, that's impossible. It, it can't happen for me, you know, because I feel like I was conditioned to believe that because native, like English speaking, I'm not a native speaker. Um, this wouldn't be possible for me. Like they would hear it in my voice. They would see it in my writing. They would feel like I'm a scam, you know? I don't know. I had these like um, fears that someone would like post about me on LinkedIn or something and say, you know, this person is a scam. Like she's an imposter. She, she can't do this. And so I don't know. I would make up these scenarios in my mind and I just, the conclusion was the same that no, this isn't possible for me. And I would just block it out of, of my mind entirely. But being the passionate person that I am, I was just like, let me give it a try anyway. And then I wasn't mistaken to continue like with the posse and everyone. I never felt for a minute that um, I wasn't a native English speaker or that I shouldn't be doing this because like it's too big for me or whatever. Everyone treated me equally and it was just like we're a family. We're all supportive of each other. And that was what gave me the push to keep going. And it worked. So, so yeah, it was the native English speaking thing that was a big doubt for me. Yeah, and you're not alone. I've heard that from so many Posse members and I get it, you know, and I think everyone has their own version of that. I always think about how we tend to overestimate other people's abilities, but underestimate yeah. our own. And I think that's so interesting, you know, like we are willing to root for people who we don't even know and we know ourselves better than anyone, yet it's so hard to root for our, ourselves. And so you know, if you're like listening to this and you're thinking, 
the same as Reem, like I'm not a native English speaker, I can't become a copywriter or, you know, fill in the blank, you know, oh, I don't have a background in sales and marketing, or I live in a different country where there's clients that don't, you know, charge or don't uh, want to hire copywriters, or I, you know, fill in the blank. There's, there's so many stories we tell ourselves. And I always say, as creative people, wow, we really use our creativity to come up with excuses why it won't work for us. You know, yeah. so imagine if we stopped using our creativity to come up with creative reasons why something won't work and instead think of creative reasons how it could possibly work. And that mindset shift, I think, is huge because whether it's whether it's where you're from or the language you speak, we all have stories that hold us back. And so I, I love that, Reem. And I've se I saw your passion and dedication and watching you over the last year has been such an honor because I think you you really have shown people what is possible when you work hard and you keep moving forward and you know despite all of the doubts and imposter syndrome and you know whatever that comes up. So let's talk a little bit about your journey in 2022. That's what year it is. Right? Yeah, in 2022. Yeah. So you were in the own the inbox challenge, you joined the launch pad can you share a little bit about um, just sort of your experience from the top of the year all the way up to sort of what you're doing now? Yeah, uh, so during Launchpad, it was the self-realization experience where I started knowing my worth and feeling like I could be doing so much more. And that honestly, it boosted further my lack of fulfillment in my job. Um, so during Launchpad, I was uh, full-timing nine to five, like I usually would because um, I wasn't yet ready to like leave it all. Uh, I'm a very calculated person. So I'm the kind who would be like, okay, well, I need to make the income of like six months or whatever before I do this. I need to think about how I'm going to tell my family because also in Egypt, no one like freelancing is seen as this thing for people who don't have a job. It's like, um, it's not taken seriously. No, no, I'm, I'm serious. No, like, but it's, it's for not people just Egypt, there's a, a lot of places. Like, yeah. I can think, yeah, I can think of a lot of friends who, and, exactly. and posse members who, who've had that thought. Too. Yeah, so yeah. to say, like, I'm going to leave, like, this corporate job where I'm a manager and managing a whole team just to freelance right, is going right. to be, like, a big question mark. Uh, so I started doing my own thing. Like, I, I, I wouldn't let it go, but I would just do it, like, on the side um, along my nine to five. Um, and I was working on my portfolio and going through Launchpad and everything. And of course, there was a lot of encouragement and like jobs being posted on the job board and people applying to things, people saying that they landed jobs during Launchpad. And I was like, OK, I need to do something. Um, it was this very healthy competition. And so I started applying to a lot of jobs. And during Launchpad, I landed for retainers um, and they were like the rates were things that I've never charged before and I've even doubled my rates here in Egypt as well so even with my clients that I had before my rates completely changed and all of that was because I started realizing my self-worth and building my confidence and feeling like I can start putting myself out there um, I started putting myself out there on LinkedIn on Instagram posting things that I've learned my experiences and you would always say one thing you would say if you know more one thing more than your clients do then you're already ahead of them and then that would be proven to me every single day because people would be so inspired they would be so impressed they would want to work with me they would feel like I'm an expert and treat me that way and so I felt like oh okay so this thing actually works um, and so that was what was happening during uh, Launchpad uh, and then after that I made the decision that I would be quitting my 9 to 5 entirely because I was starting to make a steady income and it was consistent. Um, so I just gave it like uh, Launchpad ended in April. I left, I believe, in October um, when I was when I was starting to feel like, OK, so the income is steady because I didn't want to judge by one or two months or so. Um, and so I did quit. And that's what I've been doing since then. I've been a full time copywriter and content writer. Um, right now, what I'm doing is that I basically have my own mini agency because uh, in no time I became fully booked. Um, uh, I found that I wasn't able to cater anymore to my clients. But then again, I didn't want to let them go. Um, so I leveraged the experience that I had when I was a full timer and I tapped into that team that I had with me when I was head of content. And these are writers that I had trained myself. They know my style. They know how to write exactly like me. And so they're now like on my team of freelancers and 
they help me whenever I have like excess workload. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm starting to slowly tap into my own community with Egyptians and also teach them basically how to do the same uh, gradually. And that's also looking very promising. Um, so I think what ha- the major transformation would be that I shifted from like full time employee to now I feel like I'm a business owner and I'm doing all these things like I'm marketing for myself. I'm, I'm running ads. I'm managing finances, sending invoices. I'm doing all these things that were once like what what this is so big like um and i've proved most of all i've proved to everyone around me especially my family that you know freelancing is a big thing and, and like it's like i'm running my own business i'm a solopreneur i'm not just someone who's working in my free time or doing something on the side this is a career um and it's actually starting to gain traction in egypt so i hope that this can be like influential um for other people who are also from countries like mine where you know, a lot of things need to be challenged, uh, starting with the nine to five um, career life in general. Oh my gosh. You said so much juicy stuff there. <laughs> like, first of all, holy cow, congratulations. Reem, you should feel <laughs> Thank you. so proud of yourself. You are such an inspiration. Um, and I love that you said that you kind of made a plan, right? You had a full-time job you really wanted to be a freelancer. You, you know, a lot of people glorify this like, yeah, and and then I took this course and I quit my job and and like now I'm making seven figures and driving a Lambo. Like, okay, no, what's, what's the plan? What's the process? And I think what I love about your story is that you were very practical about it. You were like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn these skills and this is what it's gonna look like for me to feel comfortable quitting my job. And I think that's so smart, you know? And and when it comes to quitting a job, like I said, there's something so freeing about being able to say, I quit my job. And so many Posse members have, uh, but the journey looks different for everybody, right? It depends. It yeah. depends on what you have going on in your life. It depends on your current situation, fam, like so many different things, but to be able to learn the skills and have the roadmap to be able to do it and, it's just so cool to think that you were able to quit your job less than a year after yeah. being in the challenge last year. And that's freaking cool. And then, like you said, such an inspiration and for you to be able to show other people in Egypt and all around the world. I mean, you're inspiring people from all around the world right now with your story. So thank you. Yeah, I really, I really love that. Mm-hmm. And I love how you're showing up and I love how you're stepping in to that authority that like it, it's been an absolute pleasure to watch you. Um, and so I'd love to hear more about sort of what copywriting looks like for you right now. So you were able to replace your income. How much are you making now roughly per month as a copywriter? Uh, so for the past around four to five months, I've been making around the 3K mark. Mm-hmm. Um, this month is when I'm hitting 4K for the first time. Um, And since I've landed two retainers just this month, so it looks like that's going to keep happening for the next few months as well. And on that note, uh, I keep seeing posts about people people getting laid off and about the recession and so forth. And um, I saw your posts before about how this is the time when the demand for freelancers is becoming more than ever. And I just wanted to say that this is very true because almost every day I wake up with a new invitation for a job or an existing client who is asking me to take on more work than I did before for asking me even if they want to work with if I'm able to work with them on a consistent schedule if I have capacity and so forth Um, so I just want to tell everyone here that this is really the time to start showing up if you haven't been for the past period and let everyone know that you offer these services because I do have this instinct that this is going to become even more so in the the upcoming months with the recession that's going on all, all over the world and so forth yeah yeah i agree you know because it's definitely this thing right people are talking about it and if there's anything we've learned in the last year it's that like job security is sort of this it's this nice idea but does it does it really exist you know like you see Mm -hmm. amazon and facebook are just doing all of these layoffs and you would think i'm working for meta like (laughs) i'm set for life right uh and i think learning the skills that can not only help you with, you know, start a side hustle like you did in the beginning, possibly turn into a full-time career. 
uh, and then possibly turn into a business. I mean, it, it's, it's never a bad thing to learn the skills that will set you up to be able to make money outside of the traditional system. And I think that that's something that you've showcased so beautifully. Um, so if I could ask in, in your words, what was the biggest transformation internally that, you, that you've experienced over the last year, aside from obviously the incredible success you've had starting and, and growing your business, but what have you noticed in yourself? Uh, mindset mindset has changed because um, I remember my calls with you with on the inbox my voice would be stuttering and I would be so scared while talking with you and because again I felt like a scam within myself like I felt like what am I even doing here with these amazing people who are talking English so beautifully and like making these huge successes like I can't be like here you know um, but then the more I spoke with you and the more I let myself speak with the community as well and started even posting questions when I had them um, that wasn't easy for me. It took a lot of courage for me to to show that there's something that I don't understand or that there's something that I have a question about or that there's something that I don't know how to do. Um, and then the posse people, they never made me again. They never made me feel like I was weird or that I was stupid or that anything. Um, even, oh my God, even failures are celebrated within the posse because there's no such thing as failures. Like everything is a win and like everything is a lesson learned. Um, and so mindset was the biggest thing. And I learned that even someone as great as you suffer from imposter syndrome and that it's normal, but that it shouldn't prevent me from pushing and to keep going. And that if I don't recognize my own value and like my own worth, no one will. And so it's all about how I position myself. And I think that translated into my work where before I was sort of this person who would feel like I'm on call whenever clients would want to get in touch with me, whenever they wanted a meeting, whenever they wanted work, even if it didn't necessarily align with me, I would feel like I should be thankful and grateful for this opportunity. So let me go ahead. But now I've learned that no, uh, there's there's a discovery call. I get to choose who to work with, who I get to choose who I want to, to deal with and who I don't want to. I get to choose the work. I get to choose everything. And so the mindset, has. I'm not the same person. I'm just not. And all of that, to think that this happened not even in a year. It just happened during like the launch pad itself. It just took a couple of months. And I felt that every day, like every single day, my mind was changing. I was growing more confident. I was able to easily identify after that, that I was... I was being paid like peanuts that people were underestimating my worth, that they need me and that I shouldn't be thankful. I, I should just appreciate myself because it's it's mutual, like it's business. Um, and so confidence, mindset, uh, knowing my worth, all of that is what I would attribute attribute to the posse. Mm. Oh, everything you said <laughs> fills my heart up. I'm just so proud of you. Uh, I'm so proud of you. What's one piece of advice to wrap up that you would give? to anybody who's maybe uh, feeling the same way that you were? Take action even when you're scared um, because that's what will get you there. Um, I used to think that this quote that said a life begins at the end of your comfort zone was a cliche and I would just avoid it because I'm a person who loves my comfort zone so much. Um, but then like the posse pushed me like you gave me some hard love and I, I just kept pushing myself out of my comfort zone during that. Um, and so now I realize that it's true. Life does begin at the end of it. And like you can't be you can't experience transformation if you don't transform yourself as well. And that doesn't necessarily mean like being an entirely different person in a bad way it sometimes being a more mature version of yourself that just that just knows your own worth so even if you're scared just just do it because being scared I feel not whenever I feel scared right now I'm like okay so I'm doing the right thing and that took a lot yeah. for me too so whenever you feel scared just go for it oh my gosh I freaking love that in fact that's been a mantra in my life is if something scares me I'm like, oh shit, because that means I should probably do it, you know? Like, yes, like exactly, God, yeah. I really want to just make up some other reason why this I shouldn't do it. And I'm just so proud yeah. of you, Reem. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, goosebumps. Isn't her story amazing? It really just goes to show that when you have the right resources and support, anything is possible. Now, the course that helped Reem massively shift her mindset and ignite her copywriting business is my eight-week copywriter coaching program, The Copy Posse Launch 
Launchpad. So inside this program, you'll get direct access to in-depth video trainings, along with group coaching, critiquing, and Q&A sessions with me and my team of Copy Posse coaches. Plus the exclusive tools, guides, and proven formulas you need to ignite your copywriting business from the ground up, just like Reem. You can learn more about that at the link below. I hope to see you inside, and I will catch you next week with a brand new video. Until then, I'm Alex. Ciao for now. All right, guys, if you enjoyed that video, make sure to check out the next one from me right here. And you can click right here to get a free gift. Want to know how Jenny, a fun, free-spirited yogi and graduate of my Copy Posse Launchpad season two, went from filing for unemployment to earning six figures as a freelance copywriter in just over a year? Keep watching.